Hey, Brent Porcio, topvelocity.net. I'm gonna to do a video on how to use the 4D motion Bluetooth biomechanics system to capture your biomechanics and learn uh, how to improve, significantly improve your throwing, pitching. This would even work with hitting mechanics, but I'm gonna to stick to, to pitching. <clears throat> really, really a powerful tool at an incredibly affordable rate. I'm just gonna go off a two sensor system. These are the sensors here. Uh, you can start purchasing two up to 14 if you want. Um, if you look at our camps here, the 3X, 2X camps, we'll use a 12 sensor system just because I can see the whole body. Uh, but that's not, you know, necessary. I mean, you can really get a lot of information in just two sensors, which I'm going to show you today. So once you get your sensors on, you have to go through the calibration process. It's just this way of flipping it. It walks you through it. I've already calibrated it. You're going to go into your account here. Once you've created your account, to manually create it, you just hit up here, you create your account. This is an app here. I'm using an iPad. Uh, once I have my account, I'm going to go to Capture, and you're going to have all these presets here, which really shows you the versatility of the system with 4D motion. Uh, I'm going to do something simple here. I'm going to go 2D. Uh, and we can do Torso. This is probably going to work best for us. And then I'm going to go through this process. Okay, what you would need at that point, you're going to need ways of clipping it on, which it typically comes with these clips, and then the chest, uh, the chest uh, brace right here. Um, but I'm going to start the process of connecting. I have the sensors on. It's searching for the sensors. Once it finds the sensors, then it's going to tell me where to put the sensors. So the first one I'm going to have to put on my chest. Okay and it lights up to show me that. So I'm gonna put this on. I, I, I like to do this backwards, you know. T they typically do it the other way. I'll do it backwards. And you know, when you're doing it by yourself, it makes it a little difficult. So what you do is you just clamp it together yourself, put it over your head and put your arms through. And this way I'll have the ability to put the sensor right here on my chest. So I'm gonna take the lit up sensor, drop it in on the chest, okay. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the next one. That's going to be my hip. So I get that clip, take the next sensor, put it into the clip. I'm going to go on my dominant hip. So I'm going to go on my, th my throwing side hip. I'm right-handed, so that's my right hip. And I hook it right here on my kind of uh, belt buckle or where my belt would go. <clears throat> now this is asking for a calibration. What it's going to do in the calibration it's going to figure out where the sensors are in relation to each other and kind of in relation to um, a Cartesian grid, meaning uh, is it on the X plane? Is the, say, the hip sensor facing on the X plane, the Y plane, or whatever? So the point is when you go to do this, you don't want to move because you want to be able to figure out where uh, it is in space. And then, say, if you're working on the mound, you want to be facing in the same direction you're going to throw or pitch or hit from. You don't want to be calibrating this way and then hitting this way. That will kind of skew the data. So I'm going to do the hit uh, go. I'm going to jump up in position to do the calibration. And just because this is hip and chest, I don't have to worry about my arm positions. When you do it in the arms, you're going to get in certain positions with the arms. But notice how I'm not moving and everything's synced up at this point. Now you're going to be listening to beeps. It should give you a beep of when it starts the calibration process, when it stops the calibration process. Okay, and then, th then it's good to go at that point. All right, so at this point now, it's ready for capture. So we got the calibration done, it's ready to capture. Now these little presets are telling me it's got a four second countdown before it starts the capture, it's got a three second capture limit, and then it's gonna automatically download it to you. Okay, so I can use this in any movement. I could use this dry just to see if I was in my room, just to see uh, how my body's moving. Um, I can also do this in a, in a, a throw or hit, hitting or swinging. Um, I'm just for instructional purposes, I'm just going to do this in a dry throw. And I'm going to get my sound on because we didn't hear a beep. So I'm going to hit capture and it's going to tell me it's going to go to a four count. It'll beep for me so I'll know when it's ready for me to go. And then I'm going to simulate a throw and we'll just take a look. So 
So we heard the first beep, that was when it started the capture, and then the last beep. Now there's a lot of cool things here we can put, if it was a hit, it was a foul ball or whatever. And this is, this is for uh, throwing. You can put um, where the location was. You can put the velocity of the throw, and then we can view it as well. So here, just because this is a two sensor movement, we're only seeing the torso uh, or the hips and the torso. And from here, I can move it around, right? And I can get an idea of how it's working. You can go into things like your graph. You can go into your kinematic sequence. So that's what I want to look at here because I can see when the hip or torso are peaking in rotation. So when they're spinning in rotation. That's important because studies show it, High velocity pitchers can typically in, uh, in, or increase the amount of time between these peaks. So a high velocity pitcher will he'll peak the hips earlier than a low velocity pitcher, but then he'll peak the trunk later, and the, and the margin between those two is higher. So actually, time is measured up here, and angular velocity is, is measured here. And we can see the red is the hip, the green is the trunk. We can see that the hip just goes before right here and then the trunk peaks right after. So the amount of time, if we look up here, if we even spread it even farther, the amount of time between the trunk, the, uh, the hip peak, which it'll show you the, the, the actual angular velocity, and then when the trunk peaks about right here, is about 5, 0.05 seconds. So we need to increase that peak, and that's something for me, because I have such thick, tight hips, I've always had a hard time separating. The more I would separate, the harder I'd throw. That's, that would be important for me to try to get the hips to peak farther out here. So I could go do more reps and just keep trying to working to get the hips to peak before the trunk, increase that, increase that what's called separation timing. Uh, and that's gonna have a, you know, something really impactful that's almost impossible to do with video analysis. Because if, for example, if you look at the tools, you go to hip line, shoulder line, this is more than likely what you're gonna see with video analysis. Let me move the graph here. See how far apart these are? And we saw when it went to the, the moment it peaked, the, the time between peak wasn't really that much, but the position looks bigger. So in video analysis, it'll look like you're separated, but you're actually not peaking at that moment. The moment it's actually peaking, there's probably a lot less separation, and that's what's almost impossible to tell with video analysis. So that's where this tool is extremely powerful because it's able to tell you something that you really can't see with the human eye. It's something where you actually have to see a measurement of what's going on. And like I said, the more you can increase that time of peak hip rotation to peak trunk rotation, the harder you're going to throw. And ultimately, too, the studies show the healthier you're going to throw. It reduces stress to the arm. So there's no better tool than a biomechanical tool that can measure biomechanics to improving your biomechanics. The problem is, is at this present time, biomechanical tools or, or equipment is extremely expensive. So you're able to get a two sensor device for well under, um, around, somewhere around $500 uh, to get this really advanced information that uh, is really, really powerful in enhancing your ability to uh, throw, pitch, or hit in the skill of baseball. So that's why I'm excited to bring it to you. We do a lot of this here. Like I said, we get more advanced with even more sensors. And there's a lot more data you can learn. So I just wanted to simply teach you about how we can use this to learn about hip-to-shoulder separation, separation timing with just two sensors. And you can use this very quickly in your training environment to keep trying to improve something as powerful as hip-to-shoulder separation. So if you want more information, you can reach out to me or make a comment below uh, or come down to our camps and, and get into our evaluation system and really learn this.